Today's Japanese Grand Prix surprisingly got underway on time, and we were treated to an ordinary grid start in the wet for the first time that I can remember. All cars were fitted with intermediate tyres, and they all seemed to cope quite well for a while. But then a couple of controversial incidents happened which were less than ideal. A recovery tractor was allowed on circuit whilst cars were still circulating and we're going to take a look at why that happened, what can be done differently and how incidents from the past were supposed to have shaped the way we use trackside vehicles in modern Formula One. For those of you new to the channel, I've been a race driver for 20 years, winning the Red Bull Kart Fight and various national series, before becoming a high-performance driver coach at the world's leading race school for a decade. I was British F4 and F3 test driver, competed at the Race of Champions against current F1 drivers, and I'm a two-time champion of the Nürburgring Nordschleife. I now work as a test driver for a leading tyre manufacturer, driving on the limit every day at tracks all around the world. So before we get into the controversy, let's start with the on-track fights down to turn one on the race's first start. The most notable one was Sebastian Vettel passing Fernando Alonso on his left-hand side down towards the first corner, which ultimately ended up with Vettel off the track, spinning into the gravel, then rolling backwards onto the track and able to continue. From Vettel's perspective, he thought Alonso had hit him, but it's pretty clear when you look at the onboard that Vettel turned into the first corner, assuming no one was there, and bounced off of Alonso, who was essentially just driving in a straight line, minding his own business. I actually don't even know whether Alonso noticed this had happened because you see no movement on his steering wheel and he just carries on as if nothing happened. Next we have Alonso again, this time on Lewis Hamilton into the hairpin. Hamilton typically takes a wider line here for a better exit and Alonso took advantage of that by diving down the inside and initially getting ahead. Hamilton saw what was happening and made a switch back and got better traction on the exit despite being slightly disadvantaged by Alonso having a moment of oversteer directly in front of him. Hamilton scampered away, got back ahead and was very lucky to avoid the debris from the next incident we're going to talk about. Carlos Sainz lost the rear of his Ferrari across some standing water on the exit of the hairpin on the run round to Spoon Curve and ended up pretty hard into the barriers and bounced back onto the circuit. He brought with him debris from his car as well as an advertising hoarding which was later collected by Pierre Gasly's Alpha Tauri. In analysing the science loss of control, there really wasn't a lot he could have done. Having said that, everybody else seemed to be able to negotiate that part of the track without losing the rear, but he just seemed to hit the standing water at such an angle with just the right amount of throttle input that he lit up the rear tyres and from that point onwards, he was a passenger into the barriers. Now, Gasly collecting that advertising board was crucial to what happened next. The safety car was deployed and collected most of the cars, but Gasly chose to pit at the end of that lap to change his nose, which had been damaged in that incident. This meant that whilst the rest of the field were bunched up behind the safety car as they went past Sainz's car, which was being recovered on the following lap, Gasly was trying to catch up with the safety car, driving a lot more quickly. Although under safety car conditions, it's pretty normal for a car that's out of sync to drive faster to catch up with the crocodile and Gasly was doing this as normal apparently without having been told that there was a safety vehicle a tractor recovering a car from the side of the circuit next to Sainz's incident. In the final moments as he approached that recovery, the lights changed from safety car to red on his dashboard, meaning that this was now a red flag. But in that moment, Gasly certainly wouldn't have been looking at the dashboard and wouldn't have been able to react that quickly anyway. With the mist hanging in the air and the very low visibility, the first thing Gasly knew about that large tractor was just before he went past it, which obviously took him by surprise and prompted him to say quite a few angry words over the radio, expressing his dissatisfaction action at the dangerous situation. God, what the, what the, yeah, what is this tractor? What is this tractor on track? I'll pass next to it, like, this is unacceptable. Other drivers who were behind the safety car travelling more slowly also noted that it was unusual to have a large vehicle stationary pretty much on the racing line whilst cars were coming past it in bad conditions. Gasly was then summoned to the stewards for driving too quickly under a red flag situation but that was relating to after he'd passed the incident and isn't related to this exact thing we're talking about here. Now the reason this situation is particularly jarring is because it was at this circuit in similar conditions and for a similar reason that we lost Jules Bianchi just a few years ago. Ago. Bianchi made contact with a stationary recovery vehicle when he lost control under yellow flags in the rain and F1 vowed from that moment to avoid similar situations. Now one of the changes that was proposed was starting the races at a time where visibility would be best and wouldn't be hindered by the sun setting. It was noted that a contributing factor to Bianchi's accident was the low visibility and we certainly had low visibility today but the time of day was completely fine. We should also remember that Jules Bianchi was blamed for the crash by the FIA for not slowing down for yellow flags sufficiently. As with Gasly today, 
It's disappointing that the FIA immediately looked to the driver for blame, rather than orchestrating a situation where there's no possibility of a car crashing into the back of a tractor. Several drivers showed their support for Gasly, including Lando Norris, who branded this as unacceptable. And while nobody's suggesting that we can't recover vehicles from the side of the track anymore unless we red flag a race, the particular circumstances of today, where we had low visibility and drivers not being informed about that vehicle at the side of the track, could definitely be taken into account and improved for the future. The most frightening thing was that marshals were working directly by the side of the circuit, in fact even on the circuit, and drivers didn't know about this until they were passing the incident, leaving them no time to take any avoiding action and every possibility to have another accident on the same standing water that science lost control on, lapping more slowly behind the safety car or trying to catch it up like Gasly was. And the point about the marshals is an important one. Even if we fitted bright LEDs to the back of recovery vehicles, and I'm not sure at this point why we haven't already done that, you could see the back of the tractor was very dimly lit, the marshals don't stand any chance of being seen by drivers at those speeds and in various circumstances we've lost the lives of marshals over the years who have been hit by Formula One cars. Marshals put themselves in extreme danger so Formula One can run and there's really no need to put them in extra danger in situations like this. On the onboard video from Sainz's car which was being recovered you can see a marshal actually steps out of the way of Gasly's car not realizing it's imminently approaching. All it takes is a small slip in the wet conditions or a mistake from Gasly and we've got a horrendous situation. And the problem is it seems like the FIA have haven't been learning from this. At the Turkish Grand Prix in 2020, cars were released from the pit lane whilst a tractor was still on circuit, with the FIA promising at the time to review the evidence to ensure that incidents like that didn't happen again in the future. Yet we heard today that even at the previous race at Singapore last weekend, the Grand Prix Drivers Association were forced to meet with the FIA to discuss another similar incident with a recovery vehicle on circuit. The rules are very clear about this. No marshal or vehicle is allowed on circuit without the approval of the race director. So unless we just have multiple rogue situations happening far too frequently, we can only assume that these personnel have actually been told to enter the circuit at these times, or that sessions have been resumed with the race director's full knowledge that there was still an unsafe situation on circuit. I appreciate we want to get sessions started as soon as possible, but there's just no need for these close calls. And in today's event, it looked pretty obvious that the race was about to be red flagged anyway. And with such a big clear up operation, there really doesn't seem to have been much need to leave the drivers and marshals in such a precarious situation. Once the race resumed, we saw some more great driving up and down the field, with Max Verstappen going on to clinch his second world championship in pretty dominant fashion, despite the confusion after the race, which we don't really need to go into here. Suffice to say that it turns out the broadcasters had just read the rules incorrectly, and that the reduced points system is only in effect if the race doesn't resume after a red flag. Since today the race did resume, and it completed under a chequered flag situation, there was never going to be reduced points, and all of us, the broadcasters and the teams, seemed just to not be aware of this fact, and us and Max only found out that he won the championship a few minutes afterwards. The final on-track action I'd like to analyse is Vettel versus Alonso on the final corners of the race. Alonso had given up track position a couple of laps earlier to fit fresh intermediate tyres and had been catching Vettel at a very high rate. In the final chicane, Alonso attacked Vettel down the inside and Vettel defended well, managing to stay on the left-hand side of the track on the exit of the chicane, heading down the start-finish straight. The better traction Vettel had being on the outside there allowed him to just pip Alonso to the line, but it was an extremely close finish and it was a shame we didn't see that live on the broadcast. So at least we got part of a race today and it's a shame we didn't get to see it go the full distance and see how all the strategic permutations would have played out given the extra laps. But our focus now switches to Austin in two weeks time with the pressure of the driver's championship over and an interesting circuit that really promotes overtaking and good racing action. So I'll see you then and thanks for watching.